Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to Lone Oak Farm. It's day five of spring and surprisingly enough, not only have we got some growth on our crops, but our grass is now fully grown as well. I was really not expecting our grass to hit its, uh, you know, its final growth stage so early in spring. I was figuring it would be the first day of summer like normal, but look at this, we have fully grown grass. That's uh, a lot earlier than expected. So we may end up doing some grass work tomorrow. We're not going to have time today. We have uh, still got you know, fields that need to be planted and uh, more fertilizing needs to be done and so on and so forth. You can see here we are currently spreading some slurry, some digestate, as I probably should say, uh, from the BGA here onto field 49. We're going to try and do this one field on its own, see whether we've got enough digestate to uh, do all of this. Uh, and then also go on and do, you know, maybe fields uh, 53 and 54 after that as well. What I'm going to do as well is uh, when we get to the end, I'm going to do a, uh, you know, a headland at this end. There we go. So we'll just turn around. And as with last year when we did some uh, some spreading like this. I am getting a worker to do it, so it takes directly from the digestate storage facility at the BGA. That way we don't have to constantly keep filling up these tanks, which on a on a map this, uh, or on a field this size, with a tank this small, even with the front tank, we, we would burn through 18,000 litres ridiculously quickly. And we would constantly be spending time running back and forth to the BGA to fill up the, uh, the tanker. This just makes that so much faster. So uh, as soon as I've got the, the kind of the, the border around this done, we'll be letting this guy go off and running. Uh, the latest word from the store uh, from Sam is that our Magnum will be ready tomorrow. So we are going to need to, uh, to stick with the quad track for another day today. Uh, and we are gonna be planting our soybean today on this field here 49 and also on 53 and 54 uh, which is why i want to try and get you know this slurry spreading done nice and early which is why we're starting you know before six o'clock this morning so let's uh, line up there we go uh, and we've got another potentially tricky bit coming up around here with the tree uh, and then once we've got past the tree, I'm going to need to do a headland at the other end. And I'm also going to need to do the other side, you know, the left-hand side strip, which will be left open. So a little bit of manual work to do here with the slurry before I can turn it over to a worker to let him just run and we can go off and concentrate on other things. But it is good to see that our crops have started growing. That was something I was perhaps a little concerned about. So if we hit the uh, the growth chart here, you can see that we have growth on all of the crops that we planted earlier. So field 30 and 35, they are our two wheat fields, 34 and 32 slash 33. These are our canola fields, 43 and 45. These are our barley fields. And as you can see, they're all now in stage one of, uh, of actual growth. And then the fields we planted yesterday, uh, 48, 51, and up the top here, fields five and six. These are all corn. Uh, these haven't started growing yet, but I'm expecting tomorrow we'll probably see a change. And of course, we still need to weed this field here, field 24, and get that to stage three as well, that grass field there. Although that is now, as I say, fully grown grass. We could go in and start cutting that as it is right now, uh, but we're gonna get it up to stage three first. All this grass here, this will go straight into the BGA and get us started on uh, building up a supply of chaff ready for you know silage fermentation later and we'll probably be looking to sell some silage over the winter when i think prices may well be at their absolutely highest if the price that we saw from silage baling is anything to, to go by oh, excuse me it's like me hiccupy this morning uh, this afternoon as i record this so uh, hopefully that'll settle down so here we are getting to the end of this pass here again to avoid running into the fields that i don't own i will be putting a headland in and uh, i'm going to very quickly 
head back to the tree and just do this strip here as well. Get this slow spread in. Now the great thing is, because uh, fields 53 and 54, we actually cultivated in an existing crop when we bought those, they're already at stage one. So when those are planted, they'll, uh, they'll be at stage one. Uh, the slurry here is going to take them to stage two, actually, so that'll be before we plant them. Uh, and then once they are planted and they start growing, they'll just need a single application of fertilizer from our uh, from our sprayer. So that'll help save a bit of cash, you know, in terms of needing to do that on these on those fields. This field here is obviously one that we had last year uh, and was cleaned off. So this is currently at stage zero. That we're adding the first stage of fertilization now. Uh, but again, once we've got these planted, we'll only need to put on two passes with the sprayer as opposed to three. So again, that'll help us out a little bit. And we'll make things even easier on ourselves next year uh, by putting down oilseed radish on all of our fields you know, for the winter. So they'll have a nice cover crop to cultivate in and give us that extra stage of fertilization through that way as well. So next year we can look at a stage of slurry or digestate. And then once that's done, then we can uh, you know, have the cover crop bonus as well. That'll be at stage two. And then they'll just need a single application with the sprayer as the crops start to grow to get us up to stage three. So hopefully the combination of doing things like that is going to save us quite a bit of money in terms of fertilizer costs. Obviously, we don't need to pay for digestate because it's a byproduct of us doing silage uh, at the BGA. And we don't need to pay for fertilizer if we're using cover crops because just cultivating that crop in uh, will give us that stage without needing to spray the field. Obviously, we'll have to pay for the seed, but that's a significantly lower cost than uh, than using fertilizer. You know, we get a natural kind of fertilization state that way. So it should reduce our operating costs next year quite significantly if we can do that. It all depends how much digestate we produce throughout the rest of this year. And uh, also, how much slurry our cows are going to generate once we get those up and running as well. We are just a few days away now from being able to bring cows into the farm. Uh, we're looking at day three, I think, maybe day two of summer. We'll check that in just a second, actually. Let's uh, get in position. There we go. Hire the worker. And let's take a look at the, pr the predicted prices for cows. That's day three. So you can see we're currently day five here of spring. Prices are still pretty high, so we're probably talking over 5,000 uh, per cow at the moment, and then it's going to start dropping away each day, and then day three is predicted to be the lowest day uh, in terms of cost. So we're probably looking at somewhere a little over 3,000 for the cow, hopefully, or 3,500, somewhere in that kind of range. That's going to be the kind of optimal window for us buying our livestock. So we'll be heading off to the auction house and uh, picking up as much cattle as we can afford. I'm hoping to bring in around 50 cows, uh, maybe a couple more if we can afford it. Uh, we still need to source a mixer as well. We've got a few days to go until we need to get the mixer as well. So a little bit of work still to do getting our cows prepped. But everything else we need, we already have. We have uh, enough materials to make TMR because we have some hay bales and we have uh, the uh, silage at the main farm in the bunker. We also have straw hiding in the, in the same shed as the hay bales as well. Uh, we have water you know we have a, a great water source nearby and water trailers we need we have everything we need as i say except for uh, the mixer to be able to make the tmr so we need to make sure we get that in place before we actually bring the cows in so i'm going to jump out just here let the worker carry on spreading slurry on our field here we're going to head back to the farmhouse we're going to go grab the quad track and we're going to go start planting some uh, soybean Actually, no, we need to wait, don't we? We need to get these uh, a bit more slurried before we can do the planting. All right, let's let's do some spraying again. We'll get some spraying done. Uh, and I need to get uh, in touch with Sam about getting a rear mower, a new rear mower, now that this grass has grown quicker than I thought. I expected to have a little bit more time than this. Uh, so we'll have to get on, in touch with Sam at Manning's and uh, find that rear butterfly mower. So in terms of spraying jobs, let's see what we need to do today. We look at the fertilization chart here. You can see that 
The corn that we planted yesterday on field 48, that needs to be sprayed. That's still at base stage. That needs to be taken up to stage one. Uh, now that we have growth uh, on these fields, we can spray these and get these uh, along another stage. This is already at stage two, so that will take it to stage three. Uh, and then same again here with uh, our 32 and 33, we can move that along to stage two. We can also look at taking 51 along to stage two as well. And then 53 and 54, we're hopefully gonna get some slurry or digestate on those fields before we plant on them. So uh, that will take them to stage two naturally. Uh, we could also look at coming and spraying fields five and six up here as well. Uh, they are currently you know, at stage one from having cultivated in or ploughed in a uh, an existing crop so we could come and spray those now that we've planted those they should still be at zero growth yes they're still at base level growth because uh, it's the corn that we planted yesterday so we could spray them but i want to wait until they at least grow a, a stage before we do five and six so it looks as though uh these fields here 34 and 32 slash 33 and then field 48 these are the fields that we're going to be spraying today uh, so we'll get those done We've just finished the refill, so let's make our way over to those fields there and uh, start sticking down some fertiliser. I think we're keeping a reasonably straight line here. Sometimes it can be a little hard to tell, but you know, with crops growing in, in nice kind of uniform rows like this, to a degree, you know, it gives us a kind of a guideline to keep sort of just above the wheel. We just take a quick look at the external view. Yeah, we're we're making sure we're getting coverage across the field. So as long as I just kind of keep this row in between the center of the booms, sort of a, a, above the uh, the steering knob on my wheel there then I should be able to you know, manage this quite comfortably. Once again, I am going to do some headlands on this field as well, just so I've got uh, a visual representation on the field in front of me of where I need to actually switch this off and, and turn it around. So if we get to the very end here, there we go. and get in position. There we go. So again, if we follow this row of crop just here, keeping it in that central position again, just check how we're doing on the outside view, or we need to go across just a touch. Let's go across another row, there we go. So it looks like my correction was an overcorrection. Now we're back where we should be. And this way I'll have a visual line, a darker line coming up in front of me so I can see exactly where I've fertilized up to. And it should hopefully make things a little bit easier for uh, switching the crop off or switching the spray off as I'm fertilizing this crop field. That's the, that's the, you know, we've discussed the downside of this, that it only has a small tank and it does take a lot of refilling. But the, this thing is one of the, the best sprayers I've driven for actual manual spraying. I've just found it really simple and easy to use. Uh, others I've found a little bit more complicated, uh, a little less clear when it comes to actually seeing exactly what I'm spraying. But this one... I've never had any issues driving this in first person. It's always been really, really straightforward and easy to see. I think just because of the way it's designed, it's really easy to keep a, a row of crop in your so, sort of central viewpoint. It's really easy to see straight away if you're going, you know, a little bit too wide. So I might just, I might just stick with this and just. Maybe we could look at getting a transport tank so we can move liquid fertilizer around a bit. Maybe we could just get some liquid pallets uh, and then we could just carry those around on the back of our, uh, our gooseneck so that when we do run low on fertilizer, we've got a mobile top-up point we can take straight to the sprayer rather than bringing the sprayer all the way back to the farm every time. That's, there's a couple of different options we could go with, but yeah, for now we'll, we'll stick with this one and see how we do.
We are just returning from our trip to the store. Uh, we've gone and collected our brand new cultivator. It was uh, arranged yesterday and uh, Sam has uh, had it ready and waiting for us this morning as soon as the store opened. And this is our new Porsche Joker, an $80,000 investment. Quite pricey, but this gives us a 12.2 meter working width. It's double the size of our current working width with our little sapphire cultivator. So this will really help speed up cleaning up the fields. I am going to keep hold of the other cultivator for now, uh, just because I think it might be a bit more useful for some of the smaller fields that we own, especially in particular fields five and six. I think it would be more useful to have the sapphire for, tho for those two fields. Plus, you know, if we ever get in a jam, we can always run, you know, the Puma and the Sapphire alongside our Magnum with this, uh, with the Joker, so that we can actually get, you know, two different fields being cultivated at the same time, or just two running on the same field. It gives us a little bit more flexibility. So we'll uh, find a place for this somewhere on a farm. We're going to leave it out for now because I'm not entirely sure where I want this to go. Uh, I have some ideas, but uh, we'll wait and see once I get back to the yard and uh, clear things away a little bit. Uh, and I've also had an email through uh, first thing this morning from my lawyer. Now you may remember that we were trying to take ownership of field uh, 50 over the winter and we were trying and failing to get hold of uh, a Mr. Alex Young who owns the field. Well, it turns out the reason why we were unable to get hold of him is that unfortunately he passed away over the winter. Uh, now the land is part of the assets of his estate and his estate has been uh, contested under the will by uh, by his children and uh, there's no there's been no sort of confirmed consensus between the two of them over what to do with the field so it's being put up for auction and uh, the auction's taking place tomorrow and uh, you know we have a choice as to whether or not we want to go and get ourselves involved in that in that auction and try and bid to own field 50 if we just pop in and take a look at the uh, at the map location so this is field 50 here. Now you can see it's already got a crop on it and it's in its final stage of growth. Now if we look at the planting uh, window uh, for soybean, you can see it does kind of extend into, uh, it does extend into the beginning of summer, the first two days of summer, if we were to put soybean on that field, assuming that we were successful and won the bid for that field. But, you know, we would need to cultivate in that wheat. Or is it wheat? I think it's wheat on that field. Let's have a look. Oh, it's barley. It's barley on that field. And we don't really have any need for another barley field. Uh, and it would work very well as a uh, as a canola field. Uh, sorry, as a, as a soybean field, I think. Uh, certainly give us a large amount of soybean crop. So... It leaves me in a bit of a dilemma because financially we really are up against it. I mean, we have a current debt now having invested in our cultivator of 1.04 million. Now, we are making very good money with our orchard uh, as each day progresses. And so we will naturally chip away at that. We still have the soybeans to sell and hopefully we can gain a lot of extra cash from those as well. But it's a big investment, you know. For a field with a, a basic value of around 230000 we might not get that price at auction. We may have to pay way more than that. You know, we may have to pay closer to 300000 I honestly don't know. It depends how the auction goes if we take part. So there needs to be a bit of a discussion back and forth between myself, my lawyer, and my accountant to see whether or not I can actually afford to buy that field. Uh, and if I can... You know, set a limit as well as to how much I'm prepared to to, to bid, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it at a discount. And I am going to bid on it simply because whoever owns that field, whoever buys that field, if it's not us, is unlikely to then want to turn around and immediately sell that field for <laughs> a price that's potentially less than they paid for it. So if we don't bid now it's entirely possible that whoever does buy it is going to work that field themselves for many, many years to come and we could lose our, potentially our only chance of gaining that piece of land, you know, for our real estate. 
So we have re no real choice, you know, if we ever want to work that field in any point point in the in the reasonable, you know, future. We're going to need to bid in the auction. So tomorrow we'll be heading over to Salem, where the auction's taking place, and uh, we'll be bidding on that field. And I say, hopefully, it's not going to break the bank. But we'll have to see just how much extra we end up paying because I'm sure we're going to end up, you know, being engaged in some kind of bidding war. You know, it's a big piece of land, it's in a great location, you know, and I, I can see a lot of other farmers in the area wanting to add a good sized piece of real estate like that to their, you know, to their farm. So, yeah, uh, I, I expect we're going to have to pay above the market price for that field tomorrow, but we'll see how we get on. So it's time for us to start our soybean planting. And start here on field uh, 49. This is uh, the first of our fields that's been uh, spread with digestate. Our uh, worker is now busy away on field 53, uh, spreading digestate on that field. We'll probably see him in just a moment. I'm going to border this field because I don't want him to uh, accidentally plant where we shouldn't be planting uh, you can see I did have a mix-up with my uh, with my worker I had to uh, chastise him quite a bit as he actually put down a strip of digestate on my freshly planted corn and I'm hoping that that's not going to throw out uh, a horrible you know imbalance uh, sort of a pH imbalance in the corn itself so we may have a, a strip of corn on the edge of this field that's a little bit dodgy <laughs> going forward next year but hopefully things will be okay so we're going to run along here going to run along this edge you can actually just see <laughs> through the walls of the shed that haven't spawned in yet there we go <laughs> always makes me chuckle the, the way the walls of that shed spawn in after everything else uh, just straightening up because I'm drifting a little bit there we go uh, you can just see there is our uh, our worker there spreading digestate on field 53 when he's done on that field he'll move across and do field 54 as well and between the two of them they should uh, make quite a bit of progress for us this afternoon getting these fields uh, nicely sort of seeded and uh, and fertilized our sprayer is still out in the field as well doing some work over there He's currently spraying our canola crops and once he's done with that he might well move on to one of our barley fields as well and, uh, and do some spraying on the barley field. So plenty of work still to be done today and we are going to need to top up our orchard pretty soon as well so that's the next thing that I need to do. Once I've got this border of soybean planted and I can turn my uh, you know, unleash the worker and just set him loose I will need to do a little bit of work uh, in the orchard because the water and manure level um, on the trees is starting to run quite low. I did check before I came out to this field and both levels were sitting at around 18%. So at some point later today they are both going to run dry and we need to keep the orchard churning out as much money as possible uh, for the limited window that we have where we can really maximise our, uh, our money. I'm also going to pay attention to how much money is being generated. I'm wondering if seasons affect the trees in any way, shape or form and uh, we may possibly make a little bit more money at various different times of the year. It's something I, uh, I have noticed with some things that are supposed to have fixed price. We saw it with the signage bales, for example. They were supposed to have a fixed price all year round and seasons changes that and you end up with uh, a price that varies depending on whereabouts in the year you are we saw that at the end of the year we were paying or getting paid a lot more for our silage bales than we were midway through the year and I, I kind of wonder if that's due to ava you know, potential availability in the middle of summer when everyone's got loads of grass 
uh, and it's all you know fresh and ripe ready for for mowing and baling there's a lot of silage going around so you would expect a lower price but in the middle of winter when grass is all dead and you know it's not easy to just whip up a batch of silage you know there might be a demand for it and uh, a less of an ability to fulfill that demand which is why you might get more for your signage bells there i mean as a narrative that would work in terms of explaining why the price is higher at winter i don't know if that's the actual case but uh, it is something that i find quite interesting and i'm curious as to whether the orchard prices will change as the year progresses as well that is uh, something I'm, I'm very curious to see so we'll definitely pay an event uh, uh, an eye on that and see if we do get paid more money at various different times of the year for now as I say we just need to get this little bit of a border done around here so I just need to do up to the tree that little bit on the other side of the tree and sort of on the middle bit of the tree we'll need to do that and then we can unleash the worker and he can finish the rest of this field off for us we can head over to the orchard and we can start uh, topping up the water and manure levels kind of looking forward to doing that the amount of time and money we spent getting that orchard set up it would be a crime i think if we didn't spend a little bit of time working in there at some point so let's just lift the cedar this is where it gets a little bit tricky can i squeeze this around here without clipping the base of the tree yes i can what i need to do is just fill that little gap there we go. Let's try and, this is where it gets awkward with a pivoting body like this. There we go. That's what I need. So let's lower this down. And just pull that forward a little bit. There we go. And now, if I can get this back in position again. awkward trying to wheel this thing around at times I can't wait for the magnum to come back I'm really missing that it's my little workhorse my star tractor I, I don't it, this farm does not feel the same without it we toyed with the possibility of maybe just doing a straight replacement for one of these quad tracks and as, as much fun as these are to use and to drive I do feel you know weird without having my magnum so we will definitely be going back to that but there we go he can carry on uh, seeding away there and he'll do the rest of this field so we'll cut across here to our orchard and once we're there we'll start uh, putting some fresh manure down on the trees and also topping up their water levels. just working on the last couple of trees and right now our uh, digestate spreader has finished on field 53 and is now starting work on 54 
and our cedar has just finished on field 49 as well so it's all kind of worked out timing wise quite well there we go that's the last of the trees watered and manured so let's just tip this last little bit of manure in the shovel back into the shed close everything up go close the doors back up and we'll leave the front loader attached so that we can go straight to manure next time excellent stuff right so our cedar is just parked up over here and as you can see he's just finished uh, literally a couple of minutes ago finished seeding on this field so timing has worked out really really well we can now jump into this and start seeding away our soybean on field 53 and by the time we're done on there hopefully the digestate will be done on field 54 and we can go straight onto that field as well make our way around the corner And again, I'm going to have to put in headland here because of the fence. I had to do uh, a double headland with the digestate spreader on field 54 at the fence next to Hollister um, root crops. Just simply because of how close that uh, fence is to the edge of the field. But again, just to give us that bit of turning room. We'll put a headland in on this side. We don't need to worry about the other side. Because it's just another empty field on the other side of this. So uh, we'll run down here. Like so. And then we'll start running along the bottom of the field. And get the rest of the soybean planted away quite nicely. Time is moving on as well. It's quarter past one. It's taken us a little while to get all those trees in the orchard done. Uh, it is a bit of a time-consuming process. You know, adding water to uh, and manure to 48 trees. It does eat up a fair bit of time. And by the time you're, uh, you're finished with the final trees, the first ones have already started to eat away at their water and manure allocation. So that's something we're going to have to be wary of as well. That uh, the first few trees that we do... They're the ones that we're going to need to check each time because they're the ones that are going to be in the worst state. But it looks as though we can go a little under two days before we need to top everything back up again. So it's not quite as long as I was hoping. And maybe, again, we were talking about maybe how the price might change uh, as the seasons progress. Maybe the rate of consumption changes as the seasons progress as well. It may well be that uh, as we're in sort of prime uh, prime time of year for growing apples maybe we're eating through the water and manure allocation a little bit quicker as well but our worker is busy running away here uh, we need to get back into the sprayer and continue spraying some crops as well so it's still a very busy afternoon a lot more to get done yet A quick check of our little heads-up display here shows that uh, field 45 is the next field that we need to work on. Uh, field 43 just in front of us is already at stage 3. Uh, we've just sprayed uh, fields 34 and 32 slash 33, uh, so we can't do those. 44 is grass, and that's been rolled last night, so we don't need to do that. Uh, and we've just planted on this, so again, we're going to wait until... We get some growth before we start planting on there. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, 45, that uh, barley field that we finished off with the puma, uh, that is now uh, ready for another stage of fertilizer. So let's uh, make our way over to 45. Uh, we'll spray that field. We'll have to top up. As you can see, we only have about 1,500 liters or so of fertilizer left in here. So that won't be enough to do the whole field. But uh, it's good to see that quite a few of our fields are now are done. So that's less fields that we'll have to worry about as the season progresses. And if we do end up buying that field 
at auction tomorrow, then that's another field that we're going to have to do a lot of prep work on. We're going to have to plough it, cultivate it, uh, slurry it uh, with digestate, uh, and then plant it. And we need to try and get all of that done you know, tomorrow if we buy the field. Uh, plus, we'll probably hope to try and get some grass work started. I have spoke to Sam about getting a large butterfly mower, uh, and uh, that should be arriving at the store tomorrow. So we will uh, be able to uh, mow our grass a little bit faster. And we're going to get rid of the uh, the folding rear mower because we just we're not going to have a need for it anymore. We can make do with uh, with the with the sort of the butterfly set at the rear. Plus, if we really want to speed things up as well, what we could also do is uh, we could attach, you know, the mowers instead of using the Puma, we could perhaps use the Magnum. And we could attach the mowers at the front and then put a windrower at the back behind to row up all the grass that we're mowing and try and combine some jobs. Make things a little bit easier for getting the grass off the field. In terms of uh, hay, we are going to need some hay. Just for our sheep. But the majority of the grass that we do is going to be uh, gathered up and turned into loose chaff. So one thing I have also ordered, uh, and I did actually order this last year, it's uh, taken some time to arrive. Uh, but one of the things I, uh, I did, you know, inquire about was the possibility of uh, another header for our uh, uh, forage harvester. Now, obviously, that has to come from Russia, so it takes quite some time to arrive. It's got to come by. Uh, by ship and be shipped out so that's uh, weeks and weeks and weeks at sea uh, but uh, that is due to arrive in the next couple of days uh, so we'll have uh, a couple of alternate headers for our forage harvester uh, that will then you know give us some more options and some more ways that we can utilize that on the farm as well Ah, now that is interesting. I've just had pop up on the screen a great demand for soybean at AgriXJS. Let's just take a quick look and see what the price is. That's 19. That's not too bad, actually. That's, I mean, it's not a great price in, in some respects. We know we can get a lot higher than that, but I'm wondering if maybe I end up offloading a little bit I don't know, I'm trying to get I'm getting ahead of myself. I can tip sixty-five and a quarter thousand litres, you know, per trip. And every trailer is gonna affect the price just a little bit. And the more I tip, the more it's gonna affect the price. But I've got a two day window. when my, pro my beans are going to be at their absolute best price. I think I'm going to hold off, but I am going to keep a watchful eye on that and just see what it ends up you know, coming out at, because that demand price might go up a little bit more. And if it goes over 2000 I may possibly, possibly sell a trailer's worth today just to uh, raise a little bit of extra cash. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Let's see. Uh, I've got... How, many, how much have I got to sell? 247,000 litres, give or take, you know, a few litres, is, is my overall total. So, if we split that down to just, say, 24, and I can sell 6.5, then that's going to be 260 over 4 tips. So I can make 4 trips. So yeah, I think I don't think we need to bother, we don't we need to worry about it. We can do a trailer uh, at one of the sell points, and then a trailer at the other sell point on day two of summer, and then do the same again on day three of summer, and that way we should get really strong prices for all four trailers worth of soybeans. 
next year when we have a lot more soybean then that might be a bit more tricky but we'll see how that goes we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it uh, we may try and be clever and rig up some kind of conveyor system or something uh, but yeah I think we don't need to worry about that great demand but I will keep an eye on it as I say uh, and I'm slightly concerned that a great demand has popped up today because it does that now lessen my chances of getting a great demand on either day two or day three of summer I really hope not but I have a feeling it probably will hmm yeah Aha, now that is interesting. I was just watching this guy finishing up on this field and all of a sudden the counter on my uh, tank has just started going down, literally just started going down. So that means I have now used up all of the digestate that we currently have at the BGA and we're now into whatever's left in my tanks here. So we have managed to put down a good degree of slurry and digestate on our fields, but it means tomorrow I won't be able to do that because we're not going to have anything left. I mean, this is it. This is the last of my digestate here. I've got 13 and a half thousand liters and dropping. So yeah, that's it. All done. So we won't have any more digestate now until we process any more uh, signage through the BGA. Uh, we just finished here, as you can see, at the same time. Just finished planting our soybean on field 40, sorry, 53. So we'll get that started on field 54. We'll come back and move that back to the farm in just a moment. Let's get our seeding up and running over here. Yeah, we have no more slurry though, uh, no more digestate. So uh, that does kind of put a, a little bit of a dampener on, on things in, in a respect for some of the jobs that we had planned for tomorrow. But having said that, at the same time, it's not the end of the world because we will, if we do take ownership of that field, we will be cultivating an, an existing crop. So we will get a free stage of fertilizer for that. So yeah. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Ooh, we're almost out of seed, actually. We're going to need to take this back to the farm and <laughs> refill this in a moment as well. Let's get this um, uh, this headland piece done first of all. I might need to do two passes. Depends how much room I'm going to have. I'm hoping I'll have enough room after just one pass. Let's lower that, turn it on. Straighten up. There we go. You can see we're on 2.6 hours on the Magnum, so uh, we've had to pay yet another 13,500 on our loan for this. I do wonder whether or not to keep this for tomorrow as well, just to help speed the turnaround process on that field, but it's just so expensive I don't know if I can really justify the cost of keeping it around for an additional day because I'm going to get an overnight fee as well again if I keep this overnight and then you know it's going to get in, it's going to tick over into three hours which means I'm going to end up paying another 13 and a half grand now I've already paid let's see I've already paid close to 70,000 for this you know, as a lease, that's a lot of money. Um, I don't think I can justify using it, you know, tomorrow as well. I think that's just probably a step too far. So I think once this field is done, we'll take the Magnum back to the store. Uh, we'll get it cleaned up, we'll return it, and then that can obviously go back to uh, um, to wherever case are going to reallocate that, either back to the showroom as a used piece of equipment or off to another farm for a demo, something like that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, as fun as it's been to use this, it's been horrendously expensive and uh, we will be removing this from our farm today so that we can bring the Magnum back in there tomorrow. So uh, let's just wait till we get to the end of this pass Then we'll jump into the Puma, uh, take that back to the farm, clean everything off there 
I'm trying to think what else can we get done today. Uh, oh, I need to roll the other grass field, don't I? So we can uh, we can head over to the uh, the sheep and we can roll out the field 24 and get that up to stage three. And then we'll probably look at starting doing some mowing tomorrow, uh, more likely here at the farm, but possibly possibly over by by the sheep. We'll see. We'll see how uh, how long it takes us at the auction. You know, to actually get through that process and also uh, whether or not we're going to be successful. If we're not successful in buying the field then we will have plenty of time because we'll have no more planting to do and very little fertilising to do. We'll have plenty of time to do mowing tomorrow. However, if we are successful in, in bidding on that field we're going to be very busy working on this field here, 50, uh, field 50 tomorrow because uh, it's a big field and as I say it needs to be ploughed, cultivated and seeded as well. So. Let's just jump out. Let's get back into the puma. We'll take this back to the farm, get everything cleaned and put away. And then we'll uh, put some skinny wheels on this so it doesn't damage the grass field. Uh, take the roller over to field 24 and start weeding that down to its final stage of fertilising. And that is the spraying finished. So nothing more we can do work-wise today. We're just going to wait for uh, the uh, uh, quad track. Completely lost the train of thought there for a second there. Uh, just got to wait for the quad track to finish seeding away on field 54. Get the last of our soybean in today. Uh, everything else has been done. Uh, we will need to probably do a bit more spraying, I would imagine, probably tomorrow. Uh, to start work on the cornfields and also uh, you know, the ones up by the BGA as well, fields 5 and 6. But essentially, uh, most of the work that we need to get done over here has now been done. So zoom in through the wall. There we go. So all that's left for us to do today, apart from return the quad track, is to take our puma over to the sheep farm and weed field 24 so let's do that right now back our way out uh, as you may have seen as we approached it uh, the uh, the boys have been busy hard at work and have switched out the wide wheels for skinny wheels this is so that when we do get over to field 24 we don't damage the grass And we do need to be wary of the rear wheels of this roller. Uh, when it's folded up like this and the rear wheels are down and obviously in contact with the grass, uh, with the ground, sorry, um, they are wide enough and heavy enough to damage the grass. So we'll have to be very careful and make sure that you know, we do as little damage to the field as possible getting onto it while we, uh, while we work away on it. <coughs> oh dear. And there we go. Time to give the cedar a clean down and also to hose off the quad track as well. Our seeding is finished. All of our fields that we currently own, and I say that as a caveat, that we currently own, because we may possibly end up owning another field tomorrow, depending on how that land auction goes. Um, all of our current fields are now seeded and in some form of fertilized state as well so we're sitting in a pretty strong position now for the rest of the year uh, the fact that our grass is going to be ready is already ready to cut uh, and we can start cutting that tomorrow a day earlier than last year uh, is uh, is very interesting i was not expecting that at all to be able to you know start working on grass as early as day five we just didn't have the time today but we may well do some Ooh, excuse me we may well do some grass work tomorrow let's get this put away uh, and we need to get this back to the store before six o'clock uh, that's when mannings close and if we can't return it today then that means we incur an overnight fee and we uh, we end up having this tomorrow and as useful as this may be to have around tomorrow it's also horrifically expensive you know for us to keep using this and, and keep hold of it so 
we're going to take this back to the store right now and uh, tomorrow we'll be able to uh, claim our magnum uh, they're just putting the finishing uh, tweaks and touches on it you never know it's entirely possible we may be able to pick the magnum up now if they're finished we'll check but we might possibly be able to get the magnum back at the end of business today so fingers crossed we'll have that right away from day you know, uh, right from the start of the day tomorrow without having to go collect it let's uh let's find out i'll see you when we get to mannings Okay, so we are here at the dealership, dropping off the quad track that has served us very well over the last couple of days. In a way, I'm kind of sad to see it go, but I mean, it's been a horrendously expensive you know, stopgap for us. So uh, let's just pop into Sam uh, in the office. We'll uh, hand the keys over and we'll find out whether or not we can take the Magnum with us as well. And yes, we've been given the go-ahead, so you can see there, uh, the repair work itself cost us uh, just under 8,000 to get our uh, Magnum re-engineered uh, you know, re and uh, an extra uh, 14,000 to get the engine uprated as well. So we now have a 380 CVX as opposed to a 340. That means some extra horsepower. Oh, listen to that. Started up first time. Doesn't she purr? So sweet. Beautiful. Oh, that sounds wonderful. So glad we're able to get this back into action today. Sam has said not to take it above 20. Uh, just on the uh, initial run-in, so we're going to be a little slow on the way back. So I'm going to put the uh, the hazards on, uh, and as soon as this is back at the farm, we'll uh, we'll lock it away for the night, and then we'll get this into action potentially in some shape or form tomorrow. So I'm just going to run the engine in at uh, 20 miles an hour on the way home, uh, and keep the speeds a little bit low, just to get us uh, kind of broken in a little bit. Uh, the uh, rest of the day I'm going to be weeding away on field 24 with the rollers. I've made a little bit of a start on that. I need to go and finish that off. Uh, I don't need to do anything else today. There's nothing else really I can do. Uh, so this is it now. The uh, triumphant return of our uh, Magnum with a new slightly more powerful engine. Let's just pull over to the side, let this guy pass us. do need to be wary of the fact that we are going to cause quite a bit of a queue on the way back potentially running at this uh, slower speed but yeah so happy to have the magnum back I've uh, almost felt a little bit lost without it but uh, once I've finished rolling away the uh, the grass field on field uh, 24 uh, that'll be it for the day we'll turn in get an early-ish kind of night uh, because we've got an early start in the morning. We're off to Salem for the land auction to see if we can actually take ownership uh, of field 50, see if we win the auction. And if we do win it, how much extra above the uh, traditional land cost is it going to uh, is it going to be? You know, that field could end up being quite expensive. And there will be a point where I'll just walk away from the auction if it's too expensive. Uh, I don't mind paying a little bit over the odds if necessary. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how the auction shakes out. Uh, and uh, that takes place tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock in Salem. So we'll need to leave our farm nice and early to make sure we're there and uh, meet up with the lawyer and, uh, and do what we need to do. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I'll be back with another episode of Lone Oak very soon.